Now, I don't say this lightly. These are quite possibly the best pasta sauces I've ever made as a home cook. Not only do they taste flat out delicious and the sauce is perfectly emulsified and creamy, but they can be made ahead of time and stored in the fridge. They are also customizable to your liking and they are foolproof due to the food science and techniques learned in my Kachoy Pepe video. So sauce number one is kind of an offshoot with a bunch of vegetables added. And then sauce number two is carbonara inspired and I think might be the single best pasta dish I've ever had. Now you'll have to let me know which one you wanna try after seeing the video, but first let's break it down y'all. Both of these pasta sauces utilize the cornstarch gel that I showed how to make in the prior video. And all you have to do is add 10 grams of cornstarch to 150 grams of water and mix that together. Pour that mixture into a pot and bring it to medium heat where it will begin to thicken up while stirring. Now keep it just under a simmer, making sure there are no clumps while mixing it up, and then turn this off the heat and set it aside. This cornstarch gel, when added to the pasta sauce, creates a super stable emulsion that won't break even when exposed to high heat. So I broke down all the food science behind this stuff in the last video, and if you haven't seen it, I would recommend watching that before continuing on with this one, because what we learned there is what allowed me to create these two recipes without ever trying them. What you are seeing on camera is actually the first time I've ever made them. For the garlic parmesan spinach sauce, first set a pot of water onto boil, which will be used for blanching the spinach. And while that comes to a boil, just prep and gather all the other ingredients. First, grate a couple of cloves of garlic, and then for the cheeses, grate a mixture of pecorino and parmesan reggiano. I had 100 grams in total. Next, get out 150 grams of spinach, and lastly, fill a bowl with ice water. Once the pot has come to a boil, just toss the spinach and let it cook for 45 seconds. This process, as you may know, is called blanching, and what it does, it just slightly tenderizes that spinach, kind of getting rid of that fibrous bite to it. And additionally, it's actually gonna lock in the color of this and it's going to keep it a brighter green than if we just left this raw and blended it together, which would actually deteriorate the color over time. After 45 seconds, transfer the blanched spinach to the bowl of ice water, which is going to stop the cooking process. Now, transfer that spinach to the cutting board and I like to give it a rough chop before blending it together in the sauce. To build the sauce, first add the cheeses, followed by the grated garlic and about 20 cranks of black pepper. Next, in goes 30 grams of olive oil and the juice from a half of a lemon. Lastly, add in the blanched spinach and that cornstarch gel along with a little pinch of salt and I like to give everything a rough mix with a spoon before blending it together. So hopefully you are starting to see the utility in this stuff. Obviously you can make it ahead and store it in the fridge, which is very convenient. But additionally, you could conceivably make this with any vegetable you want. For example, roasted red peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, peas, or maybe other leafy greens like kale. And then once you have this made, all you have to do is cook some pasta and you have a killer meal. So like normal, place a pot of water onto high heat along with a big pinch of salt and toss in the pasta. Now bring that up to a boil and cook it for one to two minutes less than the package says. Before straining the pasta, make sure to reserve about a cup of the pasta water. Now with the second pan off the heat, add a couple of spoonfuls of the spinach sauce to a pan along with a splash of that pasta water and mix those together. Now I'm gonna keep this warm on a second burner to pour over the pasta right before serving. To the drained pasta pot, add some more of our spinach sauce and give it a light mix where it will stick to the pasta. So optionally, if you're serving a crowd, I mean, just dump a bunch of that in there, mix it with the pasta water and bring it up on the heat and serve. But I do like this second pan method. It's just a little bit of a fancier way to present this dish. Using the classic ladle and tong trick, just spin that pasta up and then plate it into a bowl before pouring over that reserved hot spinach sauce. Lastly, garnish with a little more grated parm and I decided to add a little basil leaf on top too. This pasta hits so hard. It's garlicky, bright from the lemon juice, and has that salty creaminess from the cheeses. Just simple flavors done right. I was honestly so sick of cacio e pepe after eating like seven batches of the stuff. So this green sauce absolutely did the trick for me. Super light and refreshing, perfect for a spring or summer night. You can honestly just eat it cold too, it'd be very good. 
That being said, I think this neck sauce is the single best one I've ever had. Traditional carbonara has been done so many times, so I wanted to spice things up a little bit, and I'm calling this creation fiery carbonara, which I did by layering levels of spice throughout the dish. To start, we again need that cornstarch gel, and I made a double batch of that the first time, so I'm just transferring this to a container. Now, for our other sauce ingredients, it's much of the same. Of course, we have Parmigiano Reggiano, but the new additions are four egg yolks and then just some spicy components. I decided to use harissa paste and red hot chili flakes. To build the sauce, first add 100 grams of grated parm, followed by the red hot chili flakes and 15 grams of harissa. Next, add 15 grams of olive oil, the juice from a fourth of a lemon, and the egg yolks. Again, add the cornstarch gel and give everything a mix with a spoon before blending that into a smooth sauce. So remember how I talked ad nauseum about the importance of that melting point of the cheese in cacio e pepe? So with carbonara, we kind of have another temperature we need to consider, which is where the egg is gonna start setting and coagulating. But again, using the same techniques by pre-blending it in the sauce and also using that cornstarch gel, we're gonna be able to bring the temperature of the sauce above those temperatures and it's not gonna curdle, it's gonna be super creamy and smooth. So we pretty much follow the same process as the last pasta, except this carbonara is missing one key component, guanciale. I added this to the pasta and also reserved some as a topping as well. For this, get out the guanciale and cut it into even little size cubes. Now, bacon or pancetta would work great too. This isn't a traditional carbonara by any means, so make do with what you have available. With the heat off, add a drizzle of olive oil to a pan and then toss in the cubed guanciale and turn that heat to medium low and slowly render the fat from the guanciale until they turn golden brown and crisp. Make sure to go low and slow. We do not want to burn these. Once crispy, add three cloves of minced garlic and another sprinkle of red chili flakes over the top and mix all that together for one to two minutes and then turn off the heat. Make sure to reserve a couple spoonfuls of the chili garlic guanciale for the topping later on. Again, ensuring the heat is off, add a couple of spoonfuls of the carbonara sauce to this pan and mix that together and we'll keep that on a second burner for serving. To the pot of strained pasta, add some of that sauce and mix everything together. And here's where you can turn on the heat, add more pasta water or more sauce as needed. Once combined to your liking, again, use that ladle and tong trick to plate up the pasta. Pour the hot carbonara sauce all over the top and just look at all that steam coming up. Lastly, garnish with a little more parm reg and that chili garlic guanciale. Absolutely killer. So hopefully this shows you how learning food science and techniques about famous dishes can lead you to create amazing recipes for yourself. Both of these will be up on my website if you want to follow them exactly, but also don't be afraid to get creative with what you happen to have on hand. But that's going to wrap it up for me in this one. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.